today I have the pleasure of being here with director Sonia Lohman for Black Boys, which is currently available on Peacock. Uh, first off, congratulations on such a wonderful film. Um, <laughs> the one thing I, I also checked out was your previous film, Teach Us All. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I noticed is your almost nurturing way of delivering information that a lot of times is re, uh, is infuriating. It, mm -hmm. it causes a negative reaction. Mm -hmm. But in in your in your storytelling, in your in the way you deliver it, it it's it, it almost it ends up really positive at the end. Can can mm -hmm. you explain your process and how and how you put these documentaries together? Yeah, no, I appreciate that observation. Actually, I haven't heard it articulated like that, but it certainly um, is very intentional. I think, um, you know, my background is not necessarily filmmaking. It's social justice, activism, education, all these social causes. So I'm, I'm trying to fit the storytelling into kind of the social change versus maybe just fixating completely on the, the medium. Um, and that is something that you know you observe. It's very hard to get um, things changed when there's really stark polarization, as we're seeing today. But it's it's you know throughout human history you can observe it. So I think you know um, we want to talk in a confront. You know, I mean, we want to confront hard truths. We don't want to hide from them, um, but we certainly have to acknowledge that um, they're, they cause emotional reactions. And so the more, um, I guess you put somebody on the defensive or they feel attacked or whatever, it's certainly gonna create more polarization. And what we want is unification and we wanna be able to heal and transcend and transform and, and move forward. And so I think it's important to, when we have these conversations about justice and um, equity and looking at these hard truths. Um, I want to deliver it in a way that opens people um, to hear more and to listen deeper and to reflect more than just shut off and, you know, not want to hear it because it creates a sort of a defensiveness, which is just natural human nature, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what, how, how is it that you go on, go ahead and outline a film like this? Where do you make your decisions on on the, the type of content that you're gonna be pre presenting throughout the film? I mean, both the films I've done so far have, um, you know, I've approached from a, like probably as a writer, cause I was trained as a writer, not a filmmaker. Sorry, my dog. <laughs> Give me one second. It's, it's okay, right. Buck, come here. It's okay. Um, we're in a new environment right now, my sister's house. Sorry. Nice. It's okay. Can I take one second to just quiet her? It's okay, Buck. Come here. Um, so yeah, I think I approach them both as a writer, um, first and foremost, and um, that's why I think they have the chapter structure and both, both films kind of followed that, um, where I wanted to look at a subject kind of conceptually. So in the first one, it was school segregation, and educational inequality. I wanted to kind of look at it um, through these layers of segregation as we go deeper into them, um, but then tie them to like a story um, so that each is kind of illuminated through a story. And I similarly followed that with Black boys and creating these chapters of body, mind, voice, and heart, and then tying them to usually kind of a lead character that will illuminate that in a more personal way. Um, but yeah, I think, again, not having any <laughs> training in filmmaking, I just sort of went at it as I would like write a paper or something, <laughs> I think, um, with a thesis and like chapters and a conclusion. So I don't know, maybe that's, I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but that's how I did it. <laughs> well, it certainly worked well in this though. Mm. <laughs> uh, how, how do you prepare for those interviews? I mean, each of them is, is so personal. Mm -hmm. and such an emotional ride sometimes. I noticed that in one of the interviews, it, it panned back to you, and you're ready to bomb. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't, how do, how do you, how do you, how do you prepare for something like that? The truth is I don't. Um, I actually don't really do any planning. I don't script out any questions. Um, 
I think maybe with Teach Us All, I might have had a little bit more structure in terms of creating some questions beforehand or thinking about what I wanted to talk about beforehand. But with Black boys, you know, it was really, it's obviously, you know, it's a very loaded subject, um, you know, and it's a sensitive subject and it's a subject that we're not used to having across racial lines. Um, and we're not used to having really honestly. And so for me, it was, you know, I wanted to just listen and, and learn and hear. Um, and so for me, it wasn't about what questions do I want to ask or what do I want to get out of this? Um, it was very much, how do I be as present as possible? Um, just and hear and then let them sort of guide the conversation and just go deeper and deeper. Um, and so it, it takes an extraordinary amount of emotional energy to for because you're you are um, holding space. It's almost like each interview was like a therapy session in many ways or, you know, it was certainly kind of cathartic and illuminating, but it was, um, you know, I didn't want to come with sort of trying to guide it. I wanted to come and just see how deeply I could listen um, and, and let whatever was meant to unravel, unravel, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is there any particular story that, that really stood out to you or spoke to you? I mean, I think, you know, they all, everybody's story is, is so interesting, but some of the things that I think were kind of universal to observe um, was, you know, asking this question, when did you know you were a black boy? Um, and you could, I could ask that question and I would try to ask it at the sort of an unexpected moment. Um, I would say that's the only one that I kind of did use across interviews. Um, and so you have that being posed to, you know, teen, you know, from sort of twenties, teens up to somebody who was in his probably mid eighties. Um, and each time it was, it was a moment where, well, one, you know, it would kind of be like, nobody's ever asked me that, but two, it was also would send them all back to this moment in time that usually was really often very painful because what we're sort of talking about in this film is that black boy has had sort of a negative connotation in America. It's been, you know, these, these young boys have been sort of told what they are and that's often not a very positive thing in, in America. And so, you know, everybody without fail kind of had a moment that they could recall where they were sort of innocent and playful and just a free child in the world to something that was often very traumatic that would sort of help like to find them by how other people saw them, whether they were being called the N-word or teased or bullied or something. Um, some way of the world looked at them that suddenly they started going, I'm different or what does this mean or well, how do this is how people see me what is you know so so I think that was very interesting always to um and you know the point being that everybody has this child inside of them where you're you're free and you're innocent and you're just a being a human being um and then you start to be sort of defined and boxed in and um and then how you survive in that, how you adapt to that, how you have to modify your behavior for that, as we talk about in the film, you know, to make white people feel more comfortable, for them to not be scared of you, whatever it is, or maybe there's a different path you go down, but it's sort of always accommodating other people's view of you. And it was interesting to watch them kind of unpackage that, what they had learned about themselves and then how their life kind of took a path in many ways because of that. You know, so I know that's not the specific answer you were looking for, but that no. was something that really sort of stood out to me, you know. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a great answer still. Uh, so just a little bit of a deeper question now. One of the one of the questions that was posed in the film that really stood out to me was, what if America were a place that he truly belonged? Mm -hmm. And so that, that really got me thinking. And the question I have for you is, is why do you think people are, in the United States are so uncomfortable to recognize that this is still a problem? I mean, I, I don't know. I can't speak for everybody. I think, you know, for me, what I wanted to do was really 
unpackage it in myself and decondition it in myself in hopes that, you know, that self-reflection would illuminate, um, you know, so it's hard to generalize, but, you know, my personal experience that I think probably many people can resonate with, I'm assuming is, um, you know, just having grown up in a segregated environment. So statistically, we do know our schools are more segregated now, our neighborhoods are more segregated now. You know, there was intentional desegregation, um, but there was a lot of resistance to it. And then there's been really de facto segregation that's been getting worse and worse over the years. So if you think about the environments we grow up in, you know, we're often in neighborhoods with people that only look like us, um, certainly reflect the socioeconomic status as, but obviously that tracks pretty closely with, you know, race and ethnicity in this country. So often you're not only kind of socioeconomically around people that are, that are similar circumstances than you, but, but you're around people that kind of look like you or the same skin color as you. So that kind of like, I think, you know, insulates us in a way from, from, really acknowledging each other's experiences or, or even thinking about, you know, each other's experiences. And, you know, I think in this country we have, we, we try to pretend that we're post-racial. I mean, we went through civil rights movement, we went through these, these hard, painful periods, and now it's very, you know, I mean, obviously nobody would ever want to admit to being a racist. So it's like, it's just very, so you have to sort of fervently say like, you know, I'm not a racist, but then we kind of close down any conversations about um, the way that kind of racism has lingered, not only in our psychology, but our physiology. Um, so that we've learned these ways of be interacting around each other. And I often talk about for me, like, you know, as a white woman, having only lived in white neighborhoods and gone to white schools and things like that, you know, I found myself as an adult being the white woman that maybe would roll up my windows when I went through a certain neighborhood or maybe just cross the street if I saw a black man and I, and I didn't do it like thinking, oh my God, it was just, it was so automatic. It was almost imperceptible because we do it without even thinking about it. So social, you know, justice, so activist, and yet, why are you crossing the street? You know, so there's this in sort of hypocrisy in a way, or this I don't. It's this, it's this dissonance. It's not a hypocr hypocrisy because I don't want to subscribe like a malicious intent to it, but it's like this dissonance. You know, like we don't see the connections in a way. So I just think we're in a culture of denial and dishonesty, and and we're all scared of sort of being called out. But I think we just need to be braver and in going into those conversations and. And, and being a little and more uncomfortable because that's the only way we're gonna actually ever get through this. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep stamping it down and then it'll come up and stamp it down, it'll come up, you know, and it's like sickness festering in our system. Correct, no, I, it's, uh, it's a very, very complex topic. Uh, <laughs> one, one of your constant themes in both of your films is education. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing, one of the moments also that also stood out to me is the way that the, uh, a student sees education through a window and then mm -hmm. a mirror. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how important is, is the education in our future adults as far as seeing everybody as equals? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's the most important. So I actually came to education only about five or six years ago after being really kind of working in international work. And then I sort of accidentally in a way fell into education and I started really seeing the urgency of it and thinking it's suddenly like the most important thing because um, in a way it's like you know you liken it to um, preventative medicine or curative medicine like it's once we start talking about you know poverty and violence and all these things it's so far down the line that's like treating the cancer versus like eating well in the beginnings or whatever, you know, they're, the, they're not smoking in the beginning, I guess is a better analogy. So, um, you know, I've really come to see our school systems as, um, you know, they call it the battleground of the civil rights movement. I absolutely think it is. And I think our system in, in particular is, is functions essentially kind of like a caste system because it really does create these almost parallel realities for people in this country. Um, if you go to a good school, you often are set on this path. And, you know, it's just 
you get a job and you get an income and your your income over your lifetime is so much higher and you're in a, you're in diff, you're in these neighborhoods that are you know where you have access to food and there's all these things and then versus if you have a subpar education where you're not getting resources and support you're obviously going to be on this totally different trajectory and people often like to you know we have this sort of pull yourself up by your bootstraps kind of mentality in this country but it's it's not true. I mean that, you know, and especially, and I'm sorry to say when white people and especially, you know, white males kind of feel like they got, you know, I worked hard for it and, you know, well, yeah, but you often started a lot of, you know, more ahead of it. So um, it's, we have to, I think, really be honest about how these, we are setting young people up for lifetimes of marginalization when we put them through a school system that's so wildly unequal and there are going to be a couple exceptions that are going to be able to you know make it through that for whatever reason maybe they had an amazing mentor or you know they just have some something in their life but most are not going to make it through most are going to fall through the cracks and and kind of keep repeating um and so you know i think education is just you know, not only for, for setting up our incomes and our lives, but then, like you said, it's, it's how we're going to treat each other as well. Because if we were, once again, if you're in an environment where you're only around people that look like you, where you're not being taught history that only isn't, you know, white history, or if you're only having teachers that look like you and you're not, you know, there, there's going to continue, um, you know, to be that kind of white, like supremacy kind of built into our education curriculum. And, and that will um, kind of continue to create these different, as it said in the movie, these different levels of humanity, not seeing each other as equal, um, but really not being able to recognize each other as equal. Um, I think. I mean, I can go on for hours. On that. I'm like, I'm like trying to sum <laughs> yeah, that one up. It's so, so much. But <laughs> no, no, I understand. There's, there's a lot there, and um, you, your film is beautiful. It's eye-opening, mm-hmm. and I hope that everybody gets a chance to see it. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, thank you so much for spending some time with me this afternoon. Thank you. And uh, like, like I said again, make sure to check out Black Boys on Peacock. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Sonia. I hope you have I'm a wonderful afternoon. Thank you for your questions. I appreciate it.